A highly successful, incredibly talented, accomplished producer has accused me of being a fraud and lying about my beat sales just to make money off of all of you. And this happened months ago. This happened seven months ago. I need to be honest about this. I didn't want to address it, but I think I owe all of you a response because he is absolutely correctly identified by me as a liar and a moron. So I'm making this video partially because it's funny, but also partially because producer beef seems to be rising in popularity. Producer beef isn't really profitable for the community. Maybe a couple people make some ad revenue, but nothing compared to what we could make if we all collaborated on beats, shared resources, or educated each other on the music business and spread knowledge so that all of us in the producer community could succeed together. Surprise, surprise, I'm against producer beef. Criticism? Fine. I think it's great that we hold each other accountable. That's incredibly healthy to have for the producer community. For example, I made a video where I shared my screen and went through some of my major label contracts. And when it came time for me to explain how labels recouped your advances with that 3% producer royalty, I explained it incorrectly. And someone in the comments replied and explained it correctly, pointed out that I was wrong. And had they gone off and made their own video about that, I think that would have been completely fair. I wouldn't have been offended. I actually invited them on a future podcast episode. I haven't heard back from them, but clearly they know what they're talking about. Producer beef is different. When people attack producers, make certain claims about them, maybe because they honestly want to tear that person down, or maybe because they're just trying to cause chaos. It does, I think, harm the producer community. And I hope to put some things into perspective today. Now, remember this guy? Get off all the BeatStars types of sites. You know why? Yeah, we're not gonna spend any time watching his video today, don't worry. He was upset with my video that criticized his video. Now, I criticized his content, and I stand on that criticism. He also admittedly deleted all negative comments that he received on his video. What's my favorite word? I didn't do that on my end. And in fact, I went out of my way to make sure I took responsibility for his audio being messed up in my own video. Whereas he allowed some pretty awful things to be said about me in his comments section, which is fine. It's his channel. And now one incredibly successful producer exposed me as fraud with numbers and specifics to back up his claim right here in the comments section. Norbs, this is the, the guy who made the original video that I criticized. You're 100% right, so Norbs likes it because the guy's dick writing. The people attacking you, <clears throat> DJ Payne, is a visceral reaction to you exposing them. Yeah, it hurt, man, it hurt being exposed. And the real game of beat selling, which is simple, the you can sell beats too, this is how industry is the hustle. It's not the beats. DJ Payne, I promise, makes way more money on his This Is How You Sell Beats hustle on social media than he does, than he does, that's what he meant, selling a few beats a year. I promise you, he's screaming because he's serious. As a general rule, anytime anyone raises their voice in real life or types in all caps on social media, it's because they're telling the truth. I have been making slash selling beats since 2002. That was when I was a kid. I've produced and developed people for free, but the Beats game has changed tremendously over the years. And now I guess he's mad about technology being accessible. Oh, and I'm a vulture. And the paid houses, bigger hustle, which I wonder if Payne is directly associated with some of them too. Forget the fact that he types like a toddler who just dove into a swimming pool full of Mountain Dew. Let's talk about the two points he made about me being a fraud. Number one, he promises, he guarantees you that I make way more money off of my this is how you sell beats hustle on social media than I do selling beats. And two, that I'm associated with a paid library house, whatever that is. And of course, nobody here disagrees except one guy named Control Sauce It Up. His original comment is nowhere to be seen because the channel owner deleted it. Well, here he is having a seizure. That's not funny. But let's talk about this scathing expose on me, DJ Payne One. This is more caffeinated toddler talk. Um, this is a, also true. I have only been in the music business for four years. It's actually my fourth anniversary tomorrow. 
I only promised one thing, and that's DJ Payne One makes more money on YouTube and social media than he does selling beats. That's yes, I do promise. I P R O M I S E. I almost read that in the Webby cadence, but I don't want to disrespect Webby. Not only based off his social blade stats, which you can verify yourself, that says he makes up to 200 a day, $200 a day off YouTube alone. Holy shit, that's a lot of money, $200 a day. I'm doing mental math, but that's about $72,000 a year, right? That's, that's substantial. So he's putting it all together. He sees the whole matrix for what it is. All the puzzle pieces are fitting in. I don't actually make money selling beats. I make money off of YouTube and by convincing all of you that you can sell beats to somehow I monetize that, he didn't really explain that. Oh wait, no, he did. I have a service fee based beat library house. What is a beat library house? That sounds fun. I definitely don't think I live in one. I do like the library I read every day, which I'm sure is something that offends this guy, but a beat library house? I have a library in that room. I make beats in this room, but what is a beat library house? Is that like the internet money mansion? Cause that sounds fun. I'd love to be there. And not including his own pay to play hustle on his own website that he sells daily on YouTube and social media. Okay, one thing I'm gonna disagree with. I don't sell daily. I've sailed a couple times. My dad used to have this um, membership with the university here and he could rent sailboats. And I went out on one and what, what is that thing called the boom? It hit me in the side of the head and I fell into the lake and that was kind of traumatic. But let me expose myself now because here he says, you can verify yourself his claim that I make up to $200 a day from YouTube alone. He even tells us how to do that by Social Blade. Now, Social Blade is a daily revenue estimator that can estimate how much a channel generates off of YouTube every day. Every month, I make $678 off of YouTube, according to Social Blade, which is about $200 a day. Okay, in all seriousness, I'll just show you what the real numbers are. I'm not proud of these. These are pretty bad. Um, my YouTube is not doing great this month, but generally I make between $1,100 and $1,900 a month off of YouTube, which is a far cry from $72,000 a year. But wait a minute, this guy promised. He can't be lying, right? It's the internet. You can't tell lies on YouTube. We're in a unique place in history right now where fact checking can occur instantly. We can look up virtually anything we want to at any given moment from anywhere on the planet and get an answer. Ironically, also lies are being spread instantaneously to the masses who accept them at face value. And it's happening in far more serious arenas than the music producer community. But I always encourage producers to fact check everything they consume before they adopt it as a belief. For example, read the Donald Passman book. Read it until you understand the music business. Because once you understand that, you're not gonna allow a label or a recording artist to trick you into believing that you as a producer don't deserve a co-writer split on a song that you made a beat for. But also when another producer jumps onto social media and starts disparaging another producer, making claims about them, hopefully you can fact check that before believing it as true. Now my content is public, I, I don't hide anything. People can lie. You can also verify those lies, not just with, with tools like Social Blade, but if I say, hey, I just went gold. Number one, I'm gonna show you the plaque, but in the example of the Pooh Shiesty record, right? Atlanta won't send me the plaque because he's in prison and they won't send me a plaque until he gets his, which is fair, whatever. You can check the RIAA database and you can verify that not only that album went platinum, but the single that I produced with Gold Haze and JD Fang went gold, and you can check the credits on streaming sites to make sure that I actually had my hand in producing that song because some producers do lie. But if someone were to come out on social media and say, Payne One didn't produce on that record, rather than believing it, you could just simply look it up. It would take you all of two minutes to verify that. But just to be clear, I employed a, a ton of sarcasm just now. I, I sell beats for a living. That's how I make my money. I don't make my money coaching. I don't have a coaching program. I don't even have a beat selling guide. I, don't have a beat selling course. I'm working on one. It's taking me forever, but the dude's a liar. Now this guy claims to have been a producer since 2002, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he made all this money and made all these beats. So his channel's probably full of great music production content. Okay, interesting. This looks like a white supremacist podcast, bunch of anti Black Lives Matter content, a warning to white people, more anti BLM content. 
whole lot of that. And believe it or not, he also has a Patreon. So he has a pay to play scheme on his website that he charges people for. And he makes after fees probably under $100 a month off of this. So he's unsuccessfully doing what he's claiming I'm successfully doing. What a plot twist. The guy that was upset with me for criticizing his video platforms a white supremacist podcaster. Now, the big takeaway here is that people can lie about who they are on the internet. And more importantly, they can lie about other people on the internet and they can make it sound convincing and people will follow along with that lie without actually verifying it. So the beauty is we have a choice. We can choose what we consume and whether or not we believe it immediately after consuming it. And I think if we are more discerning, if we are more critical and analytical about what we consume, we will become not only smarter people, but more successful producers. And I think the, the music producer community will be a lot healthier if we actually do this. Will it happen? I don't know, but it's up to us. So on that note, I thank you for choosing to consume my videos and, and supporting my content. Even if you don't like it, you watched it, and I appreciate that. Thank you.